Hey y'all, let's take a look at some geometry today. A little bit of algebra first though. And question for you, what are the two solutions to these equations? And we'll look at, just go left to right. X squared equals four. Now what's being asked here is you have a number. If this number is squared, the answer is positive four. Well, we know of course one of the answers is two, right? But if you think about it, what else is another answer? It's negative two, right? Because if you, if you do this, negative two times negative two, well, the answer is positive four. So if you have an equation like this where something is squared and equals a number, then you will have two answers, okay? Another way of writing that the answer is two and the answer is also negative two, rather than have to write that out twice, you can just go like this, positive or negative two. So the person looks at that and goes, oh yeah, that means plus two or it means minus two, okay? So here, the answer to, the two answers to P, it would be positive and negative five, right? Because negative five times negative five is positive 25. Now this one, this is the integer 73. There is no perfect square. I mean, it's not a perfect square. So there's no way you can do this. Now, if you think about this, what you're doing in this equation here, remember if it's an equation, if you do something to one side of the equation, you did exactly the same thing to the other side of the equation. So if you wanted to go P squared, equals 25, you'd go, oh, okay, I don't know what the answer is. I'm, I'm gonna have to think the square root of that. Then what's the square root of P squared? Well, in other words, what times itself gives you P to the second power? And the answer is P times P gives you P squared. So the answer here is P, right? But we've also done this. So we've, we've, we've introduced a square root here, all right? So now we're gonna say that P is equal to plus or minus five, okay? This has no integer answer. In other words, there's no integer times itself that gives, it, gives you 73. But we're gonna do the same kind of thing. We'll take the square root of both sides and the square root of P squared is P. The square root of 73 will go like this. We'll say, since we're doing plus and minus for two answers, we'll say that the answer is plus or minus 70, the square root of 73. So that works with anything. Like if somebody tells you, you know, C squared is equal to 89, you would just don't even think about it. Just write, okay, well, C is equal to plus or minus the square root of 89. There you go. That's all there is to it. Okay, we're going to use that in a second here. But let's take a look at the Pythagorean theorem, of course, which was named after the very famous Greek uh, uh, mathematician Charles Theorem. Just kidding. Okay, his name was Charles Pythagoras. No, that isn't it, okay. Anyway, uh, this is a right triangle, which means it has a right angle, and which means the this angle plus that angle will add up to 90 degrees. The parts of this triangle, there are two legs, you can call either one, you know, both legs, and this is called the hypotenuse. Um, hypotenuse is Greek, two words, hypo, which means very irritating, and tenus, which means piece of algebra. So anyway, okay, don't take that seriously. Okay, but something happens with the Pythagorean theorem, which this was his theorem, and this is what it is. The area of a square drawn on the hypotenuse of a right triangle equals the sum of the areas of the squares drawn on the other two sides. Okay, well, that, that's a long-winded way to say like this. If you were to actually take this triangle here, which is horrific, I didn't even do it close to being right, but that's a three, that's a four, that's a five. Somebody at some point figured out, look at this, if this is three across, and this is the, you know, and we'll do like this, that'd be nine squares. Over here, you'd have four, which would, you'd, you'd, it'd look like this. You'd go, oh, well that's 16 squares, 16 squares, and that's nine squares, that's 25 squares total. Now let's go over here, if you were to do this, you'd do, you know, one, two, three, four, and then you'd do one, two, three, four, and you'd have 25 squares. At some point, somebody figured this out. So we can use that in any right triangle to find out the length of this side or the length of that side or the length of this side. And the way they do this is basically this. You should write this down. Okay, in your notebook, go ahead and write this down. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, that is the formula for the Pythagorean theorem. A squared and B squared are the legs, doesn't matter which one is which. C squared is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's, that's what you want to do. Sometimes the answers to these you will find end up as integers, like this. This is one of those special triangles, a three, four, five. You're gonna to see tons of variations of these uh, uh, throughout your math career, um, if you don't die first. 
Um, but it, you'll, you'll see some that don't work out nicely. There are, there are nice triangle, uh, you know, um, you, back, you could even go like this. You could go, that's 50 and 40 and 30. You can multiply it by 10. That would also work. You could multiply 3 by 2. That would be 6. 4 by 2 is 8. 5 by 2 uh, is 10. In other words, this number squared plus this number squared gives you that number squared. And if you wanted to do the arithmetic, for example, 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. Well, 36 plus 64 is 100, and the square root of 100 is, of course, 10. But we don't take it at negative 10 because there's no triangle that has a negative uh, length of a side, unless you're in the twilight zone. Okay, so that is how that works. So you will do the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now let's do one, all right? Given this triangle with the lengths, blah, 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 use the Pythagorean theorem to find a. I mean, I, let's just make up something. Um, I don't know. Uh, how about let's go, I don't know, we could go 7 here and I don't know, let's go 9 here, whatever. Okay, so the, the Pythagorean theorem will be a squared, one of the legs, plus b squared, another one of the legs, doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter what order, don't worry about it. Remember, if you add two numbers together, it doesn't matter what order you add them in, right? 5 plus 9 is the same thing as 9 plus 5, whatever. Okay, so that's going to be c squared. This will, however, be the hypotenuse, so make sure you do that one right. So I'm just going to stick it in there. A squared plus 7 squared, let's just do it in one step, 49, equals 9 times 9 is 81, right? So how do we solve this equation? In other words, we have made up this equation out of our own genius, okay? Or our deep love for all things algebra. So how do we solve the equation? You know how. You just go, okay, minus 49, minus 49. A squared is equal to 81 minus 49, which is 32. And remember a couple of slides back? Look at that. How do we find the answer to this right here? You just go, oh, it's going to be that number. It will be positive or negative square root of whatever. So right here will be the same exact thing. We'll just go A is equal to positive or negative. Of course, it'll just be positive, right? Because we don't have a negative length of side A. We can't go, oh, yeah, A is negative. No, ain't it. Positive, we don't even have to put a plus if you don't want to. We'll just do the square root of 32, which, you know, 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. So that's right in there between 5 and 6, somewhere around there. Now, there is a way we can reduce the square root of 32, but we'll worry about that another day. Okay. All right. Let's do another one. Find P in the blue triangle. The answer is... There it is, right there. Okay, let's go to the next one. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I mean, you know, you can make up whatever you want. Let's make this. I don't know. How about uh, you know four? And we can make this. You know, I don't know, um, five or something. I don't know. One thing you should realize is that the value for p is going to be bigger than four or five because the hypotenuse is always the longest side on the triangle. But let's just do the uh, formula, right? A squared plus b squared is c squared, and that's the c. The, don't, who cares if it's p? It's still the c, okay? So we'll just go 4 squared, 16, plus 5 squared, 25, equals p squared. All right, and I'll go ahead and flip that. p squared is equal to 25 plus 16, which is 41, and you don't even have to think about it. You know there's no perfect integer that's the square root of 41, so just go like this. p is equal to the square root of 41. It won't be plus or minus this time again because there's no such thing as a minus you know, length of a side. And that's it. Don't we are those to it. So, okay. Let's try another one. Oh, uh, I don't know. How about let's make this um, a 6, okay? And we'll make this, I don't know, 11. What the heck? All right. Well, the formula works this way. In fact, you know what? Pause it. You write the formula. Go ahead. Write the formula. Pause it. Okay, I'm assuming you paused it. So the formula is 6 squared plus m squared equals 11 squared, right? Okay, so that's 36. That is m squared. And 11 times 11 is 121. Here you go. So we just subtract 36 here and subtract 36 there. We have m squared equals 121 minus 36, which is 85. Okay, don't even think about it. Just go, you. That equals the square root of 85. Now, you know that the square root of 85, well, the square root of 81 is 9, right? So this is a little more than 9, right? Okay, so this will be a little more than 9. Is that reasonable? Yeah, because it's smaller than 11. 
you know, it can't, if you've got, oh, I got the answer is 12 point, that you know, couldn't be right, right? Because the hypotenuse is the longest side on the triangle. Anyway, just something to think of. Okay, all right, go to page 370. Try this practice problems and uh, go ahead and pause this and see what you get. Okay, well, let's give it a whirl here. Um, we know that this is gonna be longer than three or, or longer than two. So let's just do the formula. We got two squared plus three squared equals m squared. Now don't worry if it's an m, that's still the c, that's the hypotenuse, right? Two squared is four, three squared is nine, m squared is m squared. I'm gonna flip it. So m squared is equal to four plus nine, and don't even think about it. The answer is the square root of 13. Now the square root of nine is three, the square root of 16 is four, so this is somewhere between three and four. That's reasonable, it's gonna be more than that, right? This needs to be the biggest side, which it is. It's somewhere between three and four. Okay, pause it and try the second one. Okay, well, the formula is p squared plus seven squared equals nine squared. So p squared uh, plus 49 equals 81. Holy Moses, how did this thing show up again? That was completely random. Anyway, p squared is gonna be 81 minus 49, which is 32. So p is going to be the square root of 32. Two. There you go. Okay. That's the Pythagorean theorem. All right. We're getting counting down. Do a good job at it. Look, don't crud Ola your way through the, the end of this book. Okay. You're going to feel better if you really finish strongly and you're getting like 80, maybe even 90% of these questions right each time. Go ahead also, and the ones you get wrong, just make sure you understand what happened. You know exactly how to do it, okay? Algebra one starts off basically with the last 30 lessons or so of pre-algebra here. So do get a bunch of them right, okay? Take 15 extra seconds maybe on each problem. Make sure you get it right, okay? See you guys next time, bye.